We are very proud to, as a feminist movement, demand that the corporation adapt uh, a, menstrual, a menstrual leave because it will trigger a conversation about this deep-rooted issue of how our society is designed to suit the specificities of single men. So, moving on, uh, my speech will be structured as to first describing how the current workplace is structured for single men, describing how it is unacceptable that women would have to opt out by making opt out from this uh, from their own lifestyle, from their own nature, in order for them to be successful in this single man designed society, and then I'll go on to describe how it is that the menstruation in itself is not currently adapted for the current for the workplace and the demands of uh, high demanding careers. And my partners will develop how it is that society benefits from having uh, individuals with a different perspective contributing to society and how society and corporations specifically will benefit in adapting a bit in order to get greater benefit from their unique perspective. So moving on to describe how it is that the society today is adapted for single men. Uh, currently, when you think about how you are willing to commit yourself for work, or how you're willing to, how many work hours you want to do, or how is it that your bonuses for your salaries are designed, they are all related to single man events. Basically, it's uh, you as a bachelor, you get some specific kind of apartment because the company says that you as a bachelor or as an employee have this amount of space depend, uh, designed for you. Then, as you progress and you get married, the company gives you a bonus for becoming a family man, for becoming the provider of bread. And this is designed again to how it is that you as a single man is uh, suggested to develop into society. But how is it that the woman would be recognized with this scheme? How is it that women fits inside this career path? Obviously it's not, and this is clearly an indication that the way the society is structured, the way that contracts are being, uh, are being uh, made and written, is revolving around this idea of what is it to be a man and what is it to be a successful man in society. And we think that all these various uh, uh, schemes and working hours and schedules do not uh, take into account the unique nature of women and as such disenfranchise this res re valuable resource from the uh, society and the corporation. And why is that? Well, because of uh, the specificities of menstruation that I'm going to describe later, mm -hmm. women are left with a choice where they have to opt out of what makes them, in a large extent, women. Or they have to opt out of their uh, original biology because menstruation uh, is a symbol of women. Yes. So what precisely are you actually going to push forward for? Are you going to say women can leave whatever days they want when they say that their menstrual cycle is the, the, we, We're not distracted by the specificities of how we're going to implement that menstrual leave. We're just here to trigger a conversation to say that this is something that needs to be tackled. The details of which are not relevant here because the point is we want to trigger a conversation about something that is not spoken about and something that needs to be just initiated as a conversation. And we think that just making protest, providing uh, further campaigning on the social media is enough of a contribution, enough of a development of improvement current compared to the status quo, which it currently doesn't have any form of conversation about this topic because it is deeply rooted and deeply hidden across all the administri administrative layer and the behavioral biases that we have in our corporation. And just mentioning it is an improvement in and of itself. So uh, moving on to how it is that uh, menstruation uh, is symbolic of womanhood. Well, menstruation is in of itself something that uh, all women, it, unless, on, unless they have some conditions, have to go through. And it's something that is somewhat defining of their womanhood because it's preparing their body for carrying a child. So for society to ask women to opt out of this very defining feature by taking pills, by uh, having some form of medication, by simply uh, ignoring this aspect of their, of their daily life is unacceptable because it's basically denying the very nature of their biology. It is somewhat denying an aspect of their identity. And we think that in a, if a, a corporation or, an ident uh, uh, or a society demands for some of its members to completely deny some crucial aspect of their identity, we are not somewhat being inclusive. We are not uh, allowing all the voices to be heard. We are suppressing some perspectives to be uh, understood.
So moving on to how it is that uh, the menstruation affects your daily life in a way that is incompatible with the daily routine of a working schedule. Well, depending on many women, that's very diverse, but there is this notion that menstruation comes with its own hormonal imbalance that creates a, a sense of emotionality. They can, you, you struggle also to have some headaches, you can feel discomfort that is somewhat not accommodated with the current workplace. And you cannot be an effective, an effective agent in a corporate situation in the current status quo of what a corporate individual is. And we think that because corporations completely ignore or deny the existence of this uh, nature of being a woman, they are somewhat forcing women to opt out of this natural process that is part of their biology. So uh, what have I told you? I told you that we are just here to trigger a conversation about this uh, deeply rooted issue of structural, this structural bias of how a society organizes life around, what, uh, around the ideal uh, single man or the ideal family man, and we are completely denying what the specificities of other members of society, especially women, can uh, have in order to be able to be contributive and effective in society. And in doing so, we are disenfranchising them from being able to fully engage with the corporate. And triggering that conversation will be the next front for feminism because they need to be fully recognized in their unicity. And we are very proud to propose. Understanding toward the women and their rights is actually ignored. Well, we have three responses. First of all, uh, let's analyze the, men, uh, the uh, uniqueness of men menstrual Asian. This the, the big point is that this doesn't apply to all women, right? Most of the women do not have any problem um, menstruation. Only the problem is that who has severe pains or who has disease on it, for example, like PMS or something. We believe that the target number there, like uh, the number of the people who are targeted by the opposition on government side, is uh, in, small in the first place. Second of all, we believe that the law, we, we recognize there's a problem, those who are suffering from PMS. In order to tackle, tackle this problem, we, we believe that there's many other alternative ways. For example, why not like uh, why not collect donation for the medical company so that they can more invent, the, for example, the medicine that is effective to this um, PMS or this diseases? Or why not um, make why not do the lobbying activi activities so that we can pressure the government to uh, include that in the insurance or something? We can do many things. Here, here. Why we do not know. I can hear any um, specific reason from the government side why the administration leave it the only way. And third of all, we believe 
the even the data scope, the situation it gradually changes. We believe that as long as the company self design decide to implement the menstrual menstruation leave by themselves, involving the understanding of their executives or the or uh, men employees, we believe in the case, okay, and we believe that even in the status quo, like number of the com number of company who uh, implement this leave, the number of these companies actually increasing. We believe that by take, take, uh, by um, leaving the status quo, we believe there is no problem. I'm um, going to, having finished my field, going to my first point, and if you why? If you believe that so many corporations are voluntarily changing their corporate culture, then free rider program is not serious. That's why corporations are changing their behavior voluntarily in the status quo. We do not think so. We believe the number of free rider, rider or rather the increase in by implement that, that this proposal at the point that the understanding about men and women is not that clear. That's why we believe that as long as the problem appears is not that much serious inside the company, we believe that not only the men but also the women do not understand what the what this menstrual leave should be. That's why we believe the number of free riders should increase. Going to my point. Uh, my point is that my first point is that we believe the number of free riders will increase and that, that rather we believe that and that will cause it the misunderstanding and we believe that is a bad thing. We believe that as I told you, I'm continuously told you that as by the, by uh, feminist movement pushing company to make that system, we believe the number of the people who take the leave will increase. We believe that there will be a consensus. So why um so let's let's uh, analyze what the uniqueness of this menstrual menstruation leave is. We believe that this is specifically problematic in two ways. First of all, like uh, first of all, we believe that the degree of the seriousness, or the degree of its pain, is to uh, depend people to people, and there is no clear judgment who should take this and who should not take this. And second of all, we believe what is problematic is there is no proof that who is um, who is the really the um, PMS people and who is not, and who is just a free rider, or who is just not a PMS but has serious pain. There is no proof because the, uh, the spectrum is very, um, the, there is a spectrum. So we believe that this causes the uh, misunderstanding inside the company. Why? Because um, we have two reasons why. First of all, we believe that, that, that this menstruation is specifically uh, cause a misunderstanding from the men because the men do not do not have the capacity to understand how serious it is. And also, as I told you, there's no proof. The important point here is that it doesn't matter whether that the, the women who took the leave is a free, free rider or not. It doesn't matter. But the, like, what matters is the um, what matter is the perception from the other people. As long as there's someone who frequently leave, uh, take and leave, other people suspect it's really a serious matter, or just because she want to have a, just want to just want to want to have a rest. In addition to that, second reason, as a second reason, we believe that these women who are taking a leave frequently who, who likely to be in a target of the criticism because they are the one who is away from the web, from the work when the workplace is really busy. They are, in nature, these are the person who's likely to be targeted by the criticism, and that's why we believe that for, for, by this reason, the perception of the uh, men are likely to be the harsh one. And then the consequence, we, uh, what kind of consequence would happen? We believe that most likely to happen is that the women are more, less likely to, to take the leave, even if that even if that person is seriously suffering from the PMS or suffering from the pain, they hesitate to take the leave, uh, afraid of the misunderstanding and prejudice from the other from other um, other people. They must suspect what I, uh, I might be up up from the important project, or I might be demoted. The women will have such kind of fear. It doesn't matter whether it happened or not, but the fear triggers the people's action. We believe that this is rather decrease the. Um, in quality of life. Um, that's why we believe that other feminist movements that shouldn't act in a radical way. Thank you, Rina. I'd like to call on the next prime minister to continue the president's
but it's in it some more. What we care is as feminist movement, we want to trigger the conversation that women can have their own way to work. Women doesn't need to be men to success in their working place. What opposition side is saying about, like, first of all, they said there are alternatives to minimize the pain of PMS. <laughs> but, like, what they said is not really, like, we already do that, right? For example, including the p pills in the insurance, we already do. And then what else? Like, making more pills, like, we are, like, pharmaceutical company are continuously making new pills and then those. But what we want to emphasize here is PMS is symbolic of womanhood. And then we need to trigger the conversation that women can success in uh, our cooperation, in our, co uh, in our society by being women themselves. And then we are not company. We are feminist movement. We don't care about the um, like company's profit or those. No, thank you. But like as a feminist movement, we need to start a conversation that we need to pressurize company to think about a working place for women, not only for the single man, which is like status scores, status scores working place is more fit, fitable way for single man uh, workers. So therefore, we strongly propose this motion. Let me talk about like why status school women are looked down in the working place, but like as feminist movement by taking this proposal, why we can start a conversation that include women more for the working place, and those are variable on, not only for the company but also the society whole. So let me talk to my point. So like as feminist movement, we want to declare that women's women has rights to seek their success by being themselves not imitating men or like not avoiding, not, um, yeah, not avoid, yeah, not being men. So about like stair score, most women who are success in our society is men who um, abandon their womanhood. For example, Margaret Thatcher, or like those kind of person who are really success in our society is not really showing their womanhood or like don't show their womanness. And then Sarah's first best case scenario is like, so period is coming every month. And then every month when you have period and then you have PMS, you have less performance for your work because of pain or because of lack of uh, concentration or like you are a bit emotional. And then those kind of PMS situations will make you, uh, will yeah, prevent you from the having the same performance as you are usually doing. So in the best case scenario of status score is like their co-worker will think about women as an inferior version of men. Because every month they need to confront with a woman who is being emotional or like a woman who is like can work less than uh, always. So status score situation is making women's period as a handicap. So we believe that women's period is not handicap, rather than like it's making women unique. And that uniqueness is important for our society and also our company. Yes? If you want to compensate the gap between men and women, why do you why you need to take this kind of indirect action? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, first of all, it's not gap. Like what we are talking about, like women doesn't need to reach to men. Women can women by themselves. And then men is different. And then we recognize women are differently able. And then women doesn't need to disable the man or the, anything like that. So we don't need to fix the gap. We just need to have the uh, best working place for women who has different uni unicity compared to men. That's what we want to say. So, their school's problem is like period is becoming a handicap, but rather it's making women unique. And then those kind of women's unicity is important for the company too. Because first of all, because they are women, they have different types of uh, experience or different like point of view compared to men. And then those kind of the diversity can always bring the richer conversation to our company. For example, the case of we try to include 
um, differently able physically or mentally differently able to our company more, it's because they have different culture, they have different perceptions, and then those are always unique, and then those are always variable for us. Therefore, like women, biologically different, biologically difference is important. Ah, uh, no, thank you. So let me talk about why unique perspective of women is important more. Like now we are the world recognize the differences or yeah differences and a multicultural and then diverse. So this kind of action by feminist movement can open up the debate of all human being is differently able. We don't need to be the white like Caucasian man who is rich and then Protestant or something like that. But we can be ourselves, but we can success to our society. So as a feminist movement, seeking the place to women can success being by themselves and can have possibility to open the debate of multicultural and then diverse. And then as a feminist movement, um, we need to we don't want to push women are equal to men. We are recognizing women are different, but that difference is important, as I told you before, because women has different kind of experience, and then those kind of experience can give to new perspective of our society, and then also the company. So what I've told you today is we don't need to reach to men as opposition side is seeking. We want to women to be women and and they can success to our society. And those period leave will open up the debate for seeking a women's right at our first place. Therefore we propose this more than thank you. that garments that didn't achieve their goal. Since, as you know, the burden of proof and this debate from the garment side is not only showing the necessity, but triggering a conversation of the clevering of the menstruation in the first place. Unfortunately, equally, they need to explain to us why this kind, this kind of a conversation definitely, ultimately, absolutely leads to the good outcomes for the, pe the women who were suffering menstruation, and additionally, it will like also like a better for entire the women. On that occasion, we open opposition clearly talk about how like a menstruation leave caused like a misunderstanding, and additionally, actually, it's not a common interest of the women. That's why. So far, even if I say nothing to the entire and to the open government, they are already dead in this way. Having said that, in order to progress our case, I'd like to further talk about two things. Firstly, I'd like to explain to you how regular after taking this process, like that we will see increasing over the misunderstanding in the first way, and secondly, why it is also important and serious in the like, problem for like an entire feminist movement. But briefly, as you know, feminist movement is not only actor who only consider about menstruation, but also they must be like your represent all of the female like, interests. That's why unfortunately on that occasion that this motion is just called counterproductive effect. 
having said that, now you realize I have already debated all case coming with all finger. So that's why they have already done nothing to say in my reputation. Go through my first case, my first one. After taking these proposals, we can see like increasing the misunderstanding the, about like female administration. So my partner Gray talked about like yeah, since like administration, the like, uh, three. Oh sorry, I forget. Actually, I have a one reputation. Like, my <laughs> <laughs> okay, but my previous speaker just said something about the fake in the first place. In her introduction, she tried to say that actually under the status quo, low rates, low death fee is covered in the medical insurance whatsoever. Unfortunately, it's fake news coming from the deputy prime minister. Dear that even in the Japan kind of developed countries, it is not covered by medical insurance system. That's why, unfortunately, the women or girls must take this burden at that occasion. That's that's why, unfortunately, they write what they say is not true. Under the status quo, unfortunately, we can see such a kind of contradiction or good progression in the society. That's why, as a feminist movement, we should to pursue the alternative way. And then, what we have to do in this debate is examine all like, the benefits on the term of like any of like those things, and then make the conclusion. Having said that, go to my first point. So, firstly, after taking this first year, like, we can see like a more increase, like a misunderstanding. This is because my partner very talked about like her degree of her pain is totally different and so on and so forth. Even if like a government tried to say, however, still we can get the proof of her like a doctor. However, as long as like a PMS is a system priest, it's caused by like a patient's subjective narrative, it's very difficult for us. Ultimately, after taking this proposal, the number of like freeriders will increase. I don't mean like your women are like lazy or such, however, as a kind of worker, I do something in a part of the people who take try to use that kind of system. So on that occasion, within the after taking this procedure, why we cannot like why we can increase the misunderstanding? That is because like after taking this procedure, firstly like the anti-feminist people or misogynists will try to exaggerate this kind of like, like a situation as a horrible thing. Like a look like kids or like, 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 like some of the women are just like free lighting this kind of benefit and so on and so forth. That's why on that occasion, like your I think the second day, actually, unfortunately, man, you guys are lazy, sit down, press easily, influenced by this kind of work, like exaggeration in the past day. Why is that so? Firstly, as you know, like most, like, all of the men cannot understand the degree of work, PMS or menstruation, sit down, press, and the first place, biologically, we cannot take it. On that occasion, we cannot understand, unfortunately. And additionally, as you know, talking about the menstruation, are regarded as a taboo in this society, sit down, please. That's why on the taboo, and it is something embarrassing for like women. That's why on that occasion, women have like no like, motivation to talk about their PMS to like, their like friends, sit down, please. That's why like partially you can see some progress among like partner level, but it doesn't spread to the entire society. On that occasion, like unfortunately, 99% of men cannot understand, and they are just easily swayed by like the anti-feminist anti -feminist, the idea like a free life just is there and like they are just like getting some like a sit up here just utilizing and so on so that's why on that occasion this kind of like half of the society men will think like women are just utilizing exporting the benefits because just because they are the women it's unfair it's unequal so we don't want to support like a women and more a situation open so what is your alternative of a greater symbol that will unite all women other than menstruation? We don't have to say talk about the demonstration whatsoever. What we want to say is that actually we want to say like the other feminist movement, we want to support like investment or donation to the pharmaceutical company which enable those who are suffering the severe PMS to actively contribute in this like a company system. That's why we think this is an exclusive benefit of outside of the purpose. So go to the second issue. So after why does this like, misunderstanding is so toxic system press? That is because as uh, well, firstly, if, as my partner created the world, this will hinder some like, a, like a women with a severe PMS, like taking like a menstruation leave. That's why it is very toxic for them and they take the sexual relation. This is a kind of consensus goal. So that's why on the occasion we are superior to their side. Right? Uh, additional secondly, layer the feminist movement doesn't only depend the menstruation in the past place, they also concern about the sexual harassment, sexual crime, rape culture in this society, and so so. That's why on that occasion, once the half of the society, men, 
have a misunderstanding of famous movement and they have a dubious idea on that occasion. Famous movement will face much more severity at that occasion. That's why on that occasion it will nearly become, it will become nearly impossible for this movement to realize their political idea or to achieve their own like, uh, desire and so on so. That's why after taking this policy, like, uh, because uh, of like, opposing and uh, the, like, demanding the menstruation leave, like, uh, this movement will lose an important political character to like, uh, realize the greater happiness for the Women, which is also important in this debate. So, in actually, we opening up the only actor who talked about why the menstruation is not actually common to like interest of the women and how it will harm to like enter your women and their feminist movement. That's why we take this debate. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Leader for Petition. Next, I'd like to call upon the member of the government to offer your case for the next seven minutes. She's here. system. Rather, we want to look at the women who suffer from menstrual pain, who suffer from PMS, and those are the people we need to prioritize over the free riders, over the people who criticize the movement, and any other backlash that we get. We need, as a feminist movement, fight for the weakest people who are suffering under the current patriarchal system. And that's why we, I am proud to stand on government today. So before I move on, let me clarify our burden. As the feminist movement, as in any social movement, our role and our goal is to raise this issue to a platform where it is discussed. We need to make sure that the existence of vocal opposition is existing in society and that it highlights the issues and prevents the issue of menstrual leave being crowded out from other discussions. And that's exactly what we want. So any kind of backlash, we welcome that. That continues the discourse, that continues the debate that needs to happen to make sure that people who are suffering from this patriarchal system is benefits, uh, is saved. So I'm going to talk about uh, three things. Firstly, why the feminist movement should take on the role of demanding menstrual leave. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to be talking about why, because uh, firstly, because the f feminist movement fights uh, patriarchal systems that inherently disadvantage people who do not have male assets, people who do not have the patriarchal uh, benefits. And secondly, I'm going to talk about how the feminist movement needs to stand for the diversity of needs within uh, the group of women or the group of people who suffer from menstrual pain. And thirdly, I'm going to talk about um, why internal change would not occur. And fourthly, I'm going to talk about how the feminist movement is the only institution that can pressurize companies to make changes. So first about, about the basic um, reason why we need